fishing freaks welcome back to the vlog we're just doing a little maintenance today and i decided we're gonna do a little bass fishing too so i have got to replace the bunks or the bunk carpet on the crispy it's about the last thing i have to do with this boat and i've basically redone just about everything one of the beautiful things that i have found about fishing in a little a tin rig like this is everything is so simple like when you have to fix something maintenance something it is just so much cheaper than it is on a bigger more expensive boat comes with its drawbacks though but also i might have found me a new rig let's head to the water let's do a little fixing and fishing so we just lost our boat and now we've got our trailer sitting here found me a little shade tree and this is really the problem y'all not only is the carpet coming off up here, but these, these lags, these lag bolts are just, they're coming loose. Like every time I go out, I'll tighten them and then they just, they're all loosey-goosey. Threads are just gonna fall off. And then back here, we're just getting normal wear and tear. This is starting to come up right here. And then it's, it's gotten even worse. Back here on the back end, so the front two that were really bad, I've already got those ready to go. I did these at the house, had some two by fours laying around. All I gotta do is stick them on. I gotta drill some pilot holes. So basically at the tailgate, big birds in this tree, hope they don't poop on me. At the tailgate, we've got everything we need to do. If you guys have never done this, it's kind of a simple process, but you need a staple gun with stainless steel staples and you need some boat carpet. I got this roll pretty cheap off Amazon. Need some pliers to potentially pull out some of the old staples. Here's my staple gun right here. And I've got my air compressor, my hose, and then I've got a drill and I've got a wrench. This is, I basically need like my garage for this, but there's no way to get my boat off the trailer and work on it. Just have to do it at the lake, which I'm fine with. And I've got new lag bolts as well, because these are rusted. I ordered some off Amazon that were supposedly stainless steel, but I'm questioning it. Most important thing I gotta do is line this sucker up exactly how it was. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. And it's the crispy. If we're off a little bit, okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna leave that right there so I know exactly how it was oriented. Y'all have been shopping around. Been shopping around for another, another boat. I love this boat, especially for catfishing and uh, carp stabbing and, and crappie fishing. It's awesome. You know, I, I actually like not having the carpet where I can throw my fish in. And it's a meat hauler. It's the collector. It's what it does. You, you guys have seen my boats over the years. I have had some nice ones. So going to a a full small aluminum. I think this boat's right around 15 feet. It does have some advantages, but windy days, like most spring in Texas, it's just always windy and it's hard. It's hard to get around the lake. And we got offshore fishing coming up. So I've been shopping and I think I might've found a boat on Facebook Marketplace. First boat was aluminum and it, it absolutely is. I rattled the rivets out of that thing. And I swore like, if I could ever get a fiberglass bass boat, that's what I'm going with. And I did. And uh, now that they have advanced so far, I, I just, I like the advantages of it. Plus they're less expensive. Brand new bass boat right now is about 100K. So I just took my new board. I put it on here. I kind of lined these up and looked at it and just eyeballed it. And then I just stuck a little Sharpie up under here and I marked where I'm supposed to be uh, drilling my pilot holes. Alright, here we go. That's going nowhere, I hope. Got the front two bunks fixed. Now it's just on to the back. Now I don't have to replace these boards. I'm just gonna replace the carpet. So I'm just gonna take a knife, rip it out, pluck any excessive staples that are in there, take them out, and then on uh, on this one I'm actually gonna wrap up underneath the carpet. I've already cut it pretty close. This one I did not. It looks kind of, you know, it is what it is. 
The back one I'm gonna try to make look a little bit cleaner. Well, as usual, uh, the projects become more intense than you expected. So I don't know how they put the carpet on here from the factory, but it seems like it was like a pin nailer and they folded it on top of each other. It made it very hard to get out. And uh, luckily I had, a, had an ax. I wasn't scared to dull up a little bit to cut through those finishing nails, whatever they were, they weren't staples. Get that stuff off there, it's pretty sticky. Uh, now I'm just gonna take, take a knife and cut this slice it so that this is going to wrap up nicely like a little christmas present on the ends and then we'll just start stapling it in uh in my high crunch country here and on my my other truck um these chevys have a a 120 plug in the back so i'm gonna take my my air compressor right here i'm gonna plug that in turn it up to about 85 psi and then take my uh pneumatic stapler and that is so much faster than a regular stapler and they're not very expensive. So I did had to do an entire chicken coop with that thing. So it was worth it for me to get one. All right, boys, wrapping her up. You know, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a, uh, a scene issue. A couple boys, uh, down south came over here and started blasting their music didn't even offer to help me didn't even offer me a beer just rude just parked the car there turned the music up as loud as they could go and they've just been hanging out so anyway corners looking pretty flush i'm not hating on that job my original ones were black these are gray but i think that looks pretty good y'all now we're gonna see how aligned I got when we put the boat back on the trailer but hey I'm pleased with it looks good feels good it's gonna last me uh, years to come not sure if I'll have the boat that long but I got and since I'm here boats in the water we gotta we gotta get a line with Tied on an old dirty swim jig from the bottom of the boat. Oh gosh, I thought I had a bite there. There's one, got him. Look at that guy. Spotted bass, he did a dirty little spotted bass. You ordered an old dirty swim jig from the bottom of my boat. Dirty little scoundrel, you. All right, y'all, here is the big test. We're gonna be putting it on the trailer. Test the new boat carpet. There is a guy just absolutely ripping through the no wig zone right now. There's another one. Absolutely illegal. There they go, just ripping the no wake zone. And it looks like they parked their trailer in the no parking zone. So that'd be a I'd be a hefty ticket right there. Alright, let's test it out, see how we did. This is beautiful. Oh, that is so much better. Boys, we did a good thing today. Make sure we're all aligned and good here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was perfect. Slid on there nice and easy.
All right, fishing freaks, we got we got our horse back in the barn over here, so to speak. This is a seventy-five dollar pole barn. That's what that is. I ran some paracord from tree to tree, and then I just did a um, kind of like a lace pattern around that. And the whole thing when you pull it tight is is pretty effective. So the four corners was just not working. But it's keeping, it's keeping the camper, keeping the boat all good. So my hope is that there will be another vessel in here, maybe taking the place of the crispy before summertime. I'm still, I'm still looking around. I have, I've kind of narrowed it down and I'm, I've got a pretty good idea of what I want to get and maybe some accessories on top of that. But I found a pretty good deal this week and I may pull the trigger on it. So you guys stay tuned. I'm, I'm kind of excited. And let's get a little under view and undercarriage view of our bunk job. I'd say it lined up pretty nicely. Lined up really good. Coming on down here. That looks nice, y'all. I mean, it just went on the trailer smoother too. You could definitely tell. Chickens are doing pretty good. Colonel, Colonel guys, his spurs are getting massive, massive spurs, but I kind of, I kind of want him to have them, you know? He's bowed up on me a few times, but that's not enough to, ooh, daggum, I got a flea on me, son of a, I got fleas in here, it's that time of year. But his, uh, his spurs, have actually saved the chickens, you know. He, had, he fought off a bobcat, so I kind of don't want to take those away from I'm feeling these. I'm feeling little things in my leg hairs, which I uh, don't like set time of year. Oh my goodness, look at all me, how many eggs we got today. Oh my gosh. How is that even possible? We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? I don't know. There might be one held over from yesterday, unless uh one of our chickens laid like two eggs in one day we only have six ends good job today girls appreciate everything you've done here for uh the rackley roost look at that guys so many eggs in the spring You know, a lot of people ask me about, about uh, the eggs. You know, we give a lot of them away this time of year because we have so many and they say, how, how long will they last out on the counter? I don't know. Like, probably a month or so. I, they, I, I eat them sometimes, you know, a couple weeks out. They'll just, they'll be fine. You just don't wash them. They have that natural whatever it is on the outside and they're good to go. Kids wouldn't pick strawberries today, yes. We have the fresh strawberries, man. Nothing like it. Thank you to thank you to the creator of the universe for creating the fruit of the vine. Here we are. You guys, I put a few carp in here last year and it has exploded blackberries. I had two blackberry plants out here last year that were like yay tall. And they have just I mean they're they're growing off shoots that are eight foot tall. It's insane. And they're popping popping blackberries right now those are all going to be blackberries these are going to be juicies big juicy blackberries using our fish that we harvested and speaking of that i'm going to grab my bow along with my sleeping pad here because we got a big adventure coming up sort of rambling here at the end of the video but my overarching message for you guys is I want you to be a proficient, well-rounded outdoorsman or outdoor lady, whatever you happen to be. I want you to to, ha to have some skills that will uh, make you a well-rounded person in, in the woods, on the water, and uh, around the house, quite frankly. So the, the older I get, I kind of think, I th think about that. I used to be completely focused on tournament bass fishing. That was what I wanted to do. Um, 
now as I'm getting older, I'm stepping back. The thing that makes me the, the happiest is providing for the family, coming back, sitting around the dinner table, family and really enjoying the harvest and also just being proficient, getting those little things down, you know, being able to fix your own boat trailer, being able to change your own uh, motor oil, being able to fix things in a boat, knowing how to tune a boat, knowing how to do all your fishing equipment, to, uh, lots of knots, camp stuff, knowing the, the, the rules of camp, all these things that just make you an efficient outdoorsman and also just an efficient person. You take these skills with you uh, everywhere. So that's my, that's my humbling cl closing message here that I, I do want you guys to be proficient outdoorsmen. And some of the things that we do here on this channel are to uh, promote that and teach that. So if you like it, smash the like button and follow along. We've got some adventures coming up and we'll be riding in a new rig probably in the next few months. So stay tuned for that. Latest adventures with Crispy. Love you, girl. We'll see you guys on the next one.